We've talked about valves before, but I want to revisit this three position service valve. Now this service valve is different from a typical service valve, as if we unscrew this port right here, there is no Schrader core. It is completely entirely hollow. What we do have is a special stem that we operate. So we're going to take our adjustable wrench and we're going to open this top up. We have our threaded cap and this is our stem that opens and closes this valve. So this valve looks very similar to a king valve, but a king valve is located at the exit of the liquid receiver on commercial refrigeration and very rarely if you have a receiver on residential you can see one. But this valve looks like a king valve, but it's still not. It's a three position service valve. I'm telling you this information not to go and have arguments with people. I'm telling you this information so if you're working with a commercial refrigeration person, you know the difference, you know the vocabulary, you know what we're talking about. Now, I don't really care if people get this valve mixed up with the king valve because they operate the same way. I can appreciate that. The problem is when people call every single valve a king valve, it gets confusing. Are you working with the valve with the stem or are you working with the valve with a Schrader port inside? So it helps us understand what it is you're working with. So this valve is a three position valve. Right now it's what we call back seated. This valve stem is all the way up. With it back seated, it's connecting this pipe and this pipe. This pipe right here will not be connected. So if you try to hook your hoses up to it, nothing's gonna come out. Now if we wanna connect our hoses to it, we call this a mid seat. We put our service wrench on it, and we set our wrench to tighten it. As we tighten it, it's actually threading it in. So this valve goes down. When the valve goes down, it opens this port to this port, which is already done, but now it lets refrigerant flow through this port as well. So now we can read pressure in our hoses, which sounds absolutely great. The problem is new technicians will go to take their hose off, and when they take their hose off, it's dumping liquid refrigerant straight out this port. A lot of new technicians will panic, they'll take their hand and try to stop it, they get liquid refrigerant in their hand, it causes severe frostbite, blistering, and it's absolutely horrific. So first off, never try to stop liquid refrigerant in your hand. So with these valves, what you have to remember to do is back your service wrench up and you have to back seat it. In other words, back this valve all the way up. With the valve back seated, these two ports are open and this port is closed off. So that way I can take my gauges on or off. Now I like these valves because they allow us for a faster flow of refrigerant. There's no Schrader port slowing us down. But there's something else we can do. If we do a pump down, think of a refrigeration cycle. The refrigerant's coming this way and going this direction. I could take my service wrench and we could front seat it. In other words, I'm gonna screw this valve all the way down like you're closing a faucet. And if we do that, it's going to front seat. Now that it's completely closed down here, it's separated this pipe from this pipe. So these two pipes are completely separate. The refrigerant's flowing up to this point and it's backing up into the condenser. Now our gauge is connected to these two hoses. So we're still reading what's happening on this side. So we can do a pump down from it in this scenario. We can close it down. So front seat all the way down, back seat all the way up, and mid seat in the middle. So again, front seat all the way down, We've, we've closed off these two, and only these two ports are connected. And then if we mid-seat, and then if we back-seat, now it's backed all the way. These two pipes are connected, and this one is closed off. Then we have mid-seat, where we just simply crack this about halfway, not even halfway, just a couple of turns. Now this pipe, this pipe, and this pipe are all connected, and we can read pressures. Now students will say, why don't they just call it open and closed? And I thought at one time, you know, that's a great question, but the problem is what's open and what's closed. For example, right now we're mid-seated and everything's open, so that makes sense. But when we back-seat this, in other words, the valve's all the way up, these two are still open, but now this one's closed. And then again, if we front-seat it, we screw this all the way down. This pipe is closed off completely, and these two are open. So the open close gets kind of confusing. So that's why we call it front seat, mid seat, and back seat. One thing that's a little different about these also is they don't have a packing nut. A lot of the commercial refrigeration will have a packing nut on here to adjust. These typically don't have it. You see these with some of the older carrier systems and also some of the Linux systems. But I really like these valves because it means faster recovery, vacuum. There's nothing to slow down the flow of refrigerant. 
but they were more dangerous with new techs because they had to remember to back this valve all the way up. So we have the exact same thing here on our suction side. We unscrew this and right now it's back seated, which means these two pipes are connected. This one's closed off. If we screw it in a little bit, now all three of these are open and connected. And if we screw it all the way down, it closes this pipe from this pipe and only these two are connected. So let's see what it looks like inside. So if I haven't bored you enough, let's take this valve and look even farther. So here we can see the valve is back seated. This is all the way up here and this piece is what we're moving and it's all the way at the very top. So the pipe coming through here is completely connected. This flow refrigerant is unrestricted whatsoever. But because this piece is sealed right up here to the very top edge, there's no refrigerant coming from this port. You see that this port is above this opening here. Let's see what happens when we mid-seat it. So when we mid-seat it, we see that this pin drops down. And if we look right here on the edge, we can see that there's a gap right inside of there. And that gap allows the refrigerator to go up past these threads to our service port. So when we mid-seat it, we're now able to allow refrigerant not only to flow like it normally does, but also continue over to our service port right here. And if we continue to close this valve down, now it is front seated. This is front all the way down, all the way in, and it's sealed right here and closed the valve off to this section. So these two pipes are separated. What it does have is this pipe, the refrigerant can go through these threads right here to our service port. So we're still pulling a vacuum, pressure testing, recovering, whatever, from here to that point there and whatever's on this side is isolated. And if we were to open it back up again, or mid-seat it, if we mid-seat it too far, we're actually restricting some of the flow of refrigerant. But if we have it just a little bit, now you can see that there's a gap right here. We have that gap, and that gap allows refrigerant to still flow into our service port. And it really didn't have to be that much. All it takes is just for a little bit right there. And now we have full flow, and also we have it open to our service port. And if we back it all the way up, this piece connects firmly up into the back side here and it seals off this service port. So here's another one that's a little bit uh, crude of a cut. It didn't cut very well. Uh, that's my fault. We'll take a look at how it works very similar. So right now it is front seated. So the liquid line, this port here is completely separate from this port. So it's isolated. This is what you would see on say a pump down scenario. This port is open to this port, it's where gauges go. Gauges go here, so it's connected through the threads out to this side here. So we could pull a vacuum, whatever we need, from this side, but this side over here is closed off. Now, if we back this up, now we are back seated. We've backed this valve all the way out, like we're unscrewing or opening a faucet. It's all the way backed out. As it's backed out, this pin has come over here flush with the top. What that's done now is separate. It shut this gauge port off. This pipe here is completely connected so the refrigerant would be flowing like normal and no refrigerant would come out of our gauge port. If we wanted refrigerant for a gauge port, we'd have to mid-seat it. In other words, we'd have to screw this in just a little bit. Now there's a little bit of a gap right here. So the refrigerant can connect from both of these through this little gap through the, to our gauge port. So that's how it works. It's a little crude of our cutout but hopefully you get an idea of what's going on inside of this valve. Front seat. Now we're mid seat. Now we're back seat. Now not all of these three-way service valves are the same. Here's an example of a commercial one. And what we have here is a packing nut or a packing gland. This is very important for us to loosen this before we operate this valve stem, otherwise we could strip it out. So there's several ways. One, you can have a small miniature adjustable wrench. You can use a full size adjustable wrench, but the problem is that sometimes it's gonna be hard getting it into a tight fitting or or better yet, what I prefer to use is a 7 16 wrench. So when I put my wrench on here like so, we'll see that there's this little flat spot on the sides. You can see how it's rounded and then it becomes flat. 
gonna put my wrench in right there. And what I do is just simply back this off just a little bit. Now when I use my service tool or my service wrench, now I can back this out, back seat it, mid seat it, front seat it, whatever you need to do. And then what I do is I go ahead and just give it a little tighten, tighten it back up to make sure it's not gonna leak any refrigerant. So that's our packing under packing gland. If you have these three-way service valves also on the king valves as well, you'll see these points right here. But here we can put their same tool in here. I can loosen this. This one's been rusted, so it's a little tight. I can loosen this. Then I can use my service wrench on here and I can mid-seat it. 